Hello everyone, it's Jen from Old Tinker Studio. Welcome to the next Let's Animate Blender 2.8 tutorial. In this tutorial, we will be animating a stone carved text. Just a few points. It is recommended that you use the latest build for Blender 2.8. This tutorial is using the build from May 25th, 2019. We will be using the Node Wrangler add-on, which is found under your user preferences, and the Cycles Render Engine, which is found under the Render tab. Also make sure that you have GPU Compute selected under the Render tab, if available, in order to speed up the render time. Let's start by making the text. Delete the default cube and add a text object. Then rotate the text around the x-axis by 90 degrees. Tab into edit mode. Use your backspace key to delete text and then type in your own text. Tab back into object mode and switch to orthographic and front view. Use the move gizmo to center the text along the x-axis. In the latest build, you can turn on the move gizmo under the gizmos dropdown. To add thickness to the text, open up the Object Data tab, which looks like a lowercase a, and twirl open the Geometry section. The Extrude value allows you to add thickness to the text. I'm going to use 0.1 for my thickness. The bevel depth will allow you to round out the edges of the text. I'm going to use 0 0.015. And the bevel resolution, this will allow you to round out and smooth the edges. I'm just going to leave mine at 4. In order to manipulate the text and add a texture, we need to convert the text to a mesh. So under your object drop down menu, choose convert to and then mesh from curve. Now we're going to work on the stone. Add a cube. And in front view, use the move gizmo to center the cube over the text. Then in wireframe mode, scale the cube along the x-axis until it is slightly wider than the text. Then use the move gizmo to vertically center the cube over the text. And then scale along the z-axis until it's slightly larger than the text. Then use the gizmo to move the cube up along the z-axis until the bottom of the cube is aligned to the bottom of the text, but make sure that the text is not poking through the bottom of the cube. Then go into the right side view, and then scale the cube along the y-axis until it's slightly wider than the text. Go back into solid mode, 
can temporarily hide the cube. And select your text. And then in the UV editing space, make sure that you have your text selected. And then unwrap the text using project from view bounds. We just need to do this so we can actually add a texture to the text. And unhide your cube and go back over to the layout workspace. Under the shading workspace, with the cube selected, hit Control T. This will add the proper node setup so we can add a texture to the cube. On the image texture node, open up the rock texture of your choice. The link for the texture I'm using is in the description. Duplicate your texture node. Change the color space to non-color. And then open up your roughness map. Then connect the color output from the texture node to the roughness input of the principled shader. Duplicate your texture node one more time. And then open up your normal map. Add a normal map node. Connect the color output from the normal map texture node to the color input of the normal map node. And then connect the normal output from your normal map node into the normal input of your principled shader. You can make adjustments to the strength as needed. Now since we're going to be chipping away at the cube in the animation, we need more geometry. Tab into edit mode. Make sure only your cube is selected. Click on W on your keyboard and choose Subdivide. The little floating menu down in the corner, if you open that up, you can put in the number of cuts that you want. I'm going to put in 15. I'll tab back into object mode. Now we're going to add the same texture to the text. So box select all of the nodes. Copy them using control C. And hide your cube. Select the text, add a new material. We can actually delete these two nodes that are set up for us. And then paste the nodes that you just copied. You can go ahead and unhide the cube. Now we're going to add a simple floor, add a plane, and 
and make sure that it is just below the cube. And then scale it up by 15. So we can make it large enough for the animation. And then just add a simple default material to it. Now it's time for lighting and the camera. We're going to just use a simple AO lighting scheme for this animation. Open up your world tab and then check ambient occlusion. This will just give us an overall lighting setup. If you want a transparent background, which is what I recommend, open up your render tab, twirl open the film section, and check transparent. Back in the layout workspace, Go into camera mode, which is zero on your numpad. Make sure that the floor is covering the entire space of the actual camera view. Then open up the properties panel with your N key. Then go to view. Then lock camera to view. If you're using an older version of 2.8, you won't have the tabs on the side. This will just be simply a stacked view. So just look for the lock camera to view and put a check mark next to it. This will allow you to move the meshes without needing to move the camera itself. So select your meshes and then Rotate them and scale them as you want. Now it's time to work on the stone chips. So select your cube, and then under the object drop-down menu, choose quick effects, and then quick explode. This automatically sets up the modifiers and the particle system that we need. Under the output tab, Change the frame end to 100. This will limit the animation to 100 frames. Under the particles tab, change the frame end to 70 and the frame start to 20. This means that the beginning of the particles will start at frame 20 and the end of the particles will end at frame 70. Set your lifetime value to 100 so the particles will be visible for the entire 100 frames. Then change the number value to 500. This controls how many particles will be emitted and this can be changed as needed most likely you will end up changing this number when you are going to do the final animation. Just remember the higher the number, the more it's going to draw from your CPU and GPU. Let's go ahead and play the animation. Now you notice that the chips are breaking away at random sections from the cube. So in order to get the stone chips to break away from the cube from left to right, we need to change some of the particles features. So under the particles tab, twirl open the texture section and click on new to add a texture. Then under the texture tab, make sure that particle settings is chosen at the top of the tab. 
and for the type we want to choose blend. So we'll open the influence section and make sure that general time is checked. These settings will allow for a smooth transition of the particles. Now if we play the animation, we see that the particles are separating from the cube from left to right. However, the stone chips have no thickness to them. To fix this problem, add a solidify modifier to the stack. And you can just leave everything at their default. And to keep the stone chips from falling through the floor, select the floor, open up the physics tab, choose collision, change the damping value to 1, this will keep the stone chips from falling through the floor. And change the friction to 1 to keep the stone chips from sliding on the floor. Now when we play the animation, notice that these stone chips are not falling through the floor or sliding along the floor. Select the text, add collision to the text, change the damping value to 1 to keep the stone chips from falling through the text, and we'll leave friction at 0 because we want the stone chips to be able to slide off the text. Now when we play the animation, notice that the stone chips are not falling through the text but they are able to slide off the text. So now it's time to render. If you choose, you can increase the number value under the particles tab. I'm going to increase mine to 10,000. Under the Render tab, you can update the render value, but this will slow down your computer during rendering. Under the Output tab, you can choose where to save the animation under the Output section. And we also need to change the file format. I'm going to just use AVI JPEG. But you can pick any of these three movie types. Make sure that you save your project. Then to render the animation, go to the render drop down menu and choose render animation. I hope you found this useful. If you follow along with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, please tweet me your creations or any creations you make in Blender. The link is in the description. If you have any questions or suggestions for tutorials, please leave a comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe.